All right, hello everyone. Um, today, we want to talk about DIY spin quarters. The last few years, there have been uh, uh, several articles that talks about building your own spin quarter with uh, various of the shelf components. And um, for most part, so we, we, looked, we looked at them and uh, they all work. Their designs are reasonable. However, in our opinion, they're a little bit too complicated for what they want to do. Because if you're doing a DIY spin coder, you know, your goal is just to be able to um, spin code something quickly and not really uh, focus on how it looks and how it, uh, you know, is it going to function up to a commercial spin coder. And so this video has been put together to show you how to do one of these uh, spin coders with uh, minimal uh, fabrication effort, no programming, and using components you probably have uh, in-house already or you could easily purchase from Amazon or eBay. All right, first off, what should be the primary goal if this uh, DIY spin coders? Number one, safety. So that being said, you, you don't want to build something that's uh, using AC voltage directly. And secondly, you want to have a, a, some way to keep the sample that's spinning uh, uh, from flying off into the room, you know, in case, you know, when that happens, because it is so going to happen So our design is going to focus on using uh, these high-speed stepper motors. You could get these off um, um, eBay. Or, you know, we just I did a search and there are quite a few options here. Uh, fairly inexpensive, between $10 and $20. Uh, then you're going to have this computer control uh, stepper motor driver. That's from Fidgets. So I would highly recommend this board. It works very well. And lastly, you need some kind of base. And um, this is, uh, this base comes from Amazon. And it's actually not, you know, it's not really a base for spin codes, obviously. What it is, it's a bookhead. So, you know, you put it like this, put the books here. But it's great. It's, it's uh, steel, so it has a little weight to it. And more importantly, it has this slat so you will, we don't have to drill that m many holes in there. And the uh, third thing you need is a, is, is a chuck to place your sample on. Again, this is a commercial product, comes from Amazon, it's, it's for pulleys. And the good thing is, it's designed to fit these uh, five millimeter shafts. Let's uh, talk clothes. about what is the performance um, aspect of this uh, one we built. All right, so this spins uh, down to about from 10 RPMs all the way up to six or seven thousand rpms using this uh this driver board and a 24 volt power supply and the more and also you could uh change the acceleration now, and so forth as we said this is a computer control board so you wouldn't you definitely need a computer but you know if you like us you probably have a spear laptop lying around anyway so do you have to really run your own issue? Um, no we're gonna put a link in the video to uh source code a program we wrote for for this because we evaluated this board uh, some years ago to see if we wanted to use it in our own spin coder kits it turns out it's just a little bit too uh, too uh, uh, comp not complicated but it uh, it was it would be overkill for what we wanted to do but we did write the software and the software does work pretty well and that's what we're gonna take a look at okay so first and foremost let's see what we got with the spin code itself all right as i said the base here that's just um a, a bookend from amazon and uh, after that you have to you know you have a mount for the stepper motor in this kit we just use our what we use in our spin coder kits a plexiglass tubing so it keeps the motor nice and protected and below that you can see we have these two uh, standoffs and a heavy steel plate to keep it, make sure everything's weighted down and the sample is not moving around when you spin when you uh, spin coated. And of course, we mounted the uh, controller on the back of on the back of this. However, we would recommend you probably put a put an enclosure box and then put the stepper motor driver inside of it to protect it from any uh, chemical spills or anything like that. All right, next the control uh, the control computer. In this case, we're using a Reed Terminal from Seed Studio. It's a little Raspberry Pi device. And, you know, we like it. It's really compact for this type of controls. However, I'm guessing you have a laptop lying around. So our software will run as well on, on this as on the laptop itself. So 
this was just convenient. We had it in house and we decided to use it. All right. All right. So the control software is pretty basic. Uh, you know, you just have ability to set your speed um, and then set the acceleration. And uh, we have the to do basic um, two steps. So you a low speed and a high speed setting. But, you know, again, you can write your own control software pretty easily. So, you know, this is what we did for All testing right, so purposes. So let's uh, see how well the motor works and turns up with the control software. So first thing, uh, we connect to the board and uh, make sure everything is powered on. And then we hit start. So we had an acceleration 1000 RPMs per second. So it took three seconds. So we know that this is uh, being done correctly. And that's another thing we like about this board, all the hard work of figuring out how to make the motor accelerate correctly. All right, so let's uh, stop so this and try the ramp sequence. So your low speed. All right, now we're at the high speed setting. But I'm guessing you're probably going to be using glass slides. So um, how do you hold the glass slides uh, on there? Nothing fancy. Double-sided uh, stick tape works pretty well. And uh, there's no reason to do anything more complicated at this point. So put that on there. And again, safety. Make sure you're always enclosing the sample that's spinning around in something. Now we found this CD cake box has worked pretty well because they're uh, easy to machine and they're relatively inexpensive so you could just buy like 10 of them just have around when when they get uh destroyed by any kind of chemicals and yeah and they're pretty robust All right, so here it is, a very uh, straightforward approach to building your own spin coder 